I'm Miles. Welcome back to episode two, wait, not two, three. Episode three of my bumblebee costume or building the bee. In this episode, I'm gonna be showing you a step-by-step -step tutorial of how I turn this Hasbro bumblebee helmet into something that looks like this. Very dirty and perfect for how I want it. The few simple tricks you can do and apply this to any sort of armor piece or any kind of plastic piece you have. If you have this exact helmet, you can follow along at home with these simple steps and make something that looks kind of like this or however you want it. I hope you stick around to the end. It's going to be a fun one this time. The actual helmet I got is a Studio Series Bumblebee helmet exclusively at Target. It was, prob it was made for that Bumblebee movie, so not any of the Transformers movies. It was made for the Bumblebee specific movie. Uh, the helmet comes in pieces. There's a quick video here of me putting the helmet together or struggling to put the helmet together. A couple features the helmet actually has is these movable wings. I just broke one of them, nice. Uh, the movable wings on top to give you a new look. It also has lights in the eyes and comes with a bunch of different audios. incredibly loud when you're actually wearing it. It also allows you to connect your phone or laptop to it via Bluetooth and you can play music from your phone through the helmet. I tried it once, The as you heard, the speakers are not the best, so it's probably not something I'm going to utilize, but the lights themselves are pretty cool and some of the audios are pretty cool. Now before we do any sort of modifications, any sort of sanding, anything, uh, even after I just put it all together, I'm going to take the helmet back apart. So now that you see what it is, I'm gonna take it back apart so that we can actually have access to all the pieces and start customizing them. Now that we have our helmet all disassembled, we can see it's a little bit easier to work with and that's kind of why we take it apart. So another cheat code for all cosplayers, if you're doing something when you're repainting something or like doing a nerf gun or anything that comes apart it's always worth it in the end to take it apart just for easier use for easier paint jobs for you can test it test it on areas that aren't going to be shown uh, and it's just easier to take a piece off and work on it individually rather than trying to do it all at once and it, it lets you pace yourself you can work on things individually so now that it's all taken apart we're gonna start the process of taking this very beautiful, very nice helmet and beating the living crap out of it and making it incredibly dirty. Hopefully not ruining it, but we're gonna make it look like it's been through a couple battles. So the first step we're gonna do is just like the armor we did, this surface is way too clean and is not gonna take any sort of paint or any sort of weathering. So we're gonna have to sand it. Okay, so we have these two pieces sanded. Before I sand anything else, I'm gonna use these two as my test pieces to see the next part of our painting process. Now the next part, the paint job itself is okay. We like the colors underneath. I'm okay with the colors as they are. We're not changing that. That's totally fine. It's not like the armor that we have to repaint. Next step is to weather the pieces. And what we're gonna be doing for that is using shoe polish. Now normally I use Kiwi brand shoe polish but I went to the store, looked around, and I couldn't find Kiwi Burn anywhere, so I went with the next best thing, which is this. And I've never used this before, but hopefully it does the same thing as Kiwi. Now I know what you're thinking, Miles, why the hell would you use shoe polish of all things to paint on plastic or paint on anything? And I'm gonna tell you why. We're not painting, we're weathering. The difference between painting and weathering is painting, we're trying to change the color of something. And I was, if I was going to be painting this, I'd be using acrylic paint to change the whole color or spray paint. We're not painting, we're weathering. Weathering is making something pretty and making it look dirty, like you dragged it through the mud, but you have a little bit more control when you're doing it with a brush and paint. Why we use shoe polish is because, number one, it's cheaper. Number two, it's thinner. 
It's essentially a very watered down and very thin version of paint that you can use to put on this and wipe away to make it seem like there's dirt and grime and this thing is just bloody disgusting. So now the process of this is very different from painting. Paint, we put the paint down and we paint it on super easy. There's a few different ways you can apply this. What I'm gonna do for this one is I'm going to put the black shoe polish in a bowl with a paintbrush and I'm gonna paint it on real quick and I'm gonna take a paper towel and I'm going to dab it off very quickly. It's a lot easier for me to show you rather than tell you of what it actually does. So I'm just gonna show you how the shoe polish works and we're gonna hope that it does what we want it to. And here we have a very rusty and dirty looking bumblebee piece. And it's exactly what I wanted it to look like. I honestly took a shot in the dark, but I trusted the process. And this is a real trust the process step because I know when it painted it all black, you were probably freaking out like, oh my God, he just ruined it. But I didn't. If you just want something subtle, I recommend just very subtly doing some weathering on the sides. I want mine very dirty. I don't want that that clean. I want it looking like a dirty scrapyard piece and that's perfect for what I wanted. So essentially, if you were confused about the shoe polish step, that is why we use the shoe polish because paint would have taken onto that and it would immediately adhered. The shoe polish gets into all these nice crevices and combining it with that sandpaper gives you a real scuffed metal look. Essentially like how we did dry brushing, but we can't do dry brushing on yellow because it's yellow. So we have to kind of work backwards. So that's kind of what we're doing, and I'm gonna apply that. Now that I know it works, I'm gonna apply that to all the other pieces. And here we have all the weathered pieces along with my very weathered hand. Uh, I'm gonna have to wash my hands up to this. Comparing that to the initial yellow we started with, you can see it's very, very different. Um, but I'm actually very happy with this. I'm very happy with how dirty it looks. I'm very happy with how scuffed it looks. And I might have to apply the same method to the armor we have, because this armor is a little yellow compared to this. So I'll either have to apply this method to the armor to dull it down or apply some sort of uh, paint method to this to bring the saturation back up. Uh, the lighting in my room isn't doing it any favors. It is a lot more yellow than the camera is picking up. But in terms of weathering, I'm very happy. I'm happy how this section turned out in particular, how it looks like little oil leaks almost around uh, B's head, which is perfect for him because he's a car. So now that we have all those parts done, we have <laughs> This part that I am terrified to move forward on. Um, it's silver, so it's a bit different. I'm gonna apply the same kind of method with the dry brushing, uh, not the dry brushing, with the weathering. I might not sand it as much to kind of get this oil leak effect. Uh, I'm gonna have to be very careful not to get to his eyes. I might tape his eyes off. Uh, and I'm just going to apply that same method to all the areas that are visible to the outside, because these cover a lot but all the areas that are visible. And I'm also going to apply some dry brushing to this to bring up some of this metallic look. When I said that I was going to do the same kind of paint method to this helmet, um, so I took, oh, whoops. So I took the sandpaper to the face and I started stripping away the paint. And this is where I noticed that, first of all, I have to give Hasbro a hell of a props. They did a crazy good job on this helmet. The amount of detail in not only this piece, but all the other pieces so far, that we're able to pick up with just a few simple tricks, I'm blown away at the actual detail 
that Hasbro put into this helmet. Uh, it's crazy good. Obviously, the paint job is kind of poop, which is why we're doing this. But in, in terms of detail, props to you, Hasbro. And here's the method that some of you might recognize from the last video or from the live. We're going to take some silver paint, dab it up till it's touch dry, and do a little bit of dry brushing. Just very minimally. We don't need to be super crazy on this part because we did most of the work with the weathering, but it's always nice to add a little bit of a dry brush touch. It's been only about an hour or two, and this, the flat black we just sprayed on looks very beautiful. Keep in mind, we did not sand or even prime this piece before, but it still looks beautiful. Uh, if you watched the video before this, you know that if we scrape on this or do any sort of uh, tape or sandpaper, this paint will come off. And we're using that to our advantage. That's why we didn't sand and that's why we didn't let it cure all the way, because I'm going to sand this paint off to bring that gray back out. With all the pieces looking the way we want them to, I'll paint it up and dirty nicely. We're gonna go outside and hit it with some matte clear just to keep it all grounded in there. I know it seems weird that if it's a dirty paint job, you wanna keep it clean. It's not even keeping it clean, it's just making sure that nothing inhibits or gets on it that we don't want it to get on it. So, one quick cover of this and we should be good to go. for watching guys uh, as you see as you saw in the beginning this helmet is how it turned out with a few simple tricks you can do this type of stuff to just about any piece you can imagine nerf gun armor bumblebee helmet whatever you want I took the same method and applied it to this little arm piece so you can do it on small pieces too but thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode